Let's take a look at an example that involves a couple of files. So this program is going to take, a, take an existing file, it's going to read the data from that, and it's going to copy that file to the output. So this program is going to make a copy of the file, and it's going to do it in two different ways. Uh, we're going to do it word by word, and then we're going to do it one line at a time. A, uh, the, the program has some variables. I have a string for word and a string for line. So this is to read in one word at a time. That's to read in one line at a time. And I've got some variables to count how many words we have and how many lines we have. You've already seen how to open files, so there's no need for me to spend time doing that. Uh, you will need the file, this uh, history of C++ text file, which you can uh, download if you look at the notes for this video. So I'll need that file to open it up. And then I'm going to make a copy of it. And I'm going to call that copy just copy text file.txt. So um, I've got the if statements to make sure everything opened up OK. And then we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the main point of this program, which is to read in the data and write it to the output file. So the first thing we will do is we're going to do this one word at a time. So now that we have the files open, we just need to have a loop that will loop through and read each word and then write it to the output file. So let's go ahead and get our loop, and instead of typing it in, I'm just going to paste in the loop because we've already done this once already in a previous video. So we use a while loop here. A text file, that's the name of our input file. So while we've not reached the end of the file, we want to stay inside the body of this loop. So to begin with, we're just going to read a word from the text file, and we're going to print it back to the screen, and we're going to count. And so when we get through, we'll find out how many words we have in the file. So we just need the add to code to do that. So we'll read in the word, and then we'll just print it directly back to the screen. Now this is a pretty big file, so we'll have a lot of output lines, but this will illustrate pretty clearly that we're reading in the data and we're writing, that, writing in the data, writing out the data one word at a time. So we have the C out statement, we just put a colon here, and then we'll print out the word, then we have an end line. So we'll get one word per line. Then we need to count the words, and we also need to write the word to the output file. So let's, let's look at the code to do that. So we'll put that in here. So we'll write the word to the output file, and our output file pointer is just called text out. So I'm going to write the word, and then I'm going to put a space to the output file, because otherwise all the words will be joined together. We won't be able to uh, tell one from another. So I'm going to write the word, then I'll write a space. And as we go through the loop, then we'll get a new word, and then we'll write that out as well. So all the words will be written to the output file with one space between them. Then at the end of the loop, we'll just update our word counter by doing the plus plus operator, and that will count all the words. So we will go through the entire file, reading in one word at a time, printing it to the screen, printing it to the file, and then counting how many we have. Now there's already some code at the bottom of the loop, which will print out how many words we found. So the C out statement says there were, then we'll print out how many words there are in the word count, and then we'll finish off the sentence by printing out words in the file. Now, we'll do another part of this shortly, but let's see what we get here when we do the, uh, the first part of this, this first loop. To begin with, let's take a look at the actual data that's in the file. So here's the file. Let's bring it over. So this is just some text I found which goes into the history of C++. And uh, you can see that we have several paragraphs. So we have uh, one pretty big paragraph here, and then there's a blank line, and then we have another paragraph, and so on. So we have several paragraphs, and if you went through all those words, you'd find roughly 700 or so words that are in this file. Now, some of these are not words. You know, technically, these are things like numbers, but for our purposes, we're just going to count anything that's separated by spaces. Okay, so C++ 98 with a period. So anything that has a period, anything that has a space on both sides, we want to say that that is a word. So that's what the um, input is going to do. Just like CN, if you're inputting from a file, then it stops whenever it sees a space. So it reads in the word the, then there's a space, so the input operation stops when it sees that space. Then the next time we try to read, it reads the next thing, it stops at the next space, and so on. 
So that's why we get anything that's uh, followed by a space, and it, that will be counted as a word. All right, so let's move this file out of the way. We'll keep it handy because we're going to create a new file that's going to be a copy, and we'll look at that copy when we're finished. Okay, copy text file. So that's what we're writing out to. So let's compile this program and run it, and let's see what kind of output we get. Now let's look at the output. So here you see we have one line, um, well, one word per line. So we printed out the colon and we printed out the word. Okay, so where do we do that? So that shows up for this C out statement here. So that sends the data out to the screen. So we print out every word in the file and we have a lot of words and some things that are not really words like C++. But we keep going and we found out that we had 727 words in the file. So that's how many things there were, uh, including numbers and other things that aren't really words. And also notice that we do maintain these extra punctuation things here as well. So we have the period, we have the comma, and uh, those things show up here as part of the word. But that doesn't concern us at this point. We just wanted to count the things that were separated by spaces. Okay, so we have made a copy of the file. Let's go get the file itself and see what that looks like. So I'll get my file browser, and here's the uh, copy, copy text file dot text. So let's just open that up, and I'll use WordPad to uh, open that with. So now here is the copy of the file. Now in this case, you'll see that we don't really have an exact copy because all of these words are contiguous. There are no blank lines in between them, so it doesn't look the same as the original file and that's because we didn't do any uh, end lines. We didn't write any end lines back out. But we do actually have a copy. All the words that were in the original file are now in our copy. So that made a copy word by word. And we also counted how many words we had as we were making the copy. Now, given that, let's look at a different way that we can go about this. Now, the second part of the program, we want to use the get line feature to read in a line at a time instead of a word at a time. So here's part two of the program. And in order to read through the file again, we have to reset the file back to the beginning because this loop here uh, took us all the way to the end of the file. So if we tried to start reading immediately, then we'd be at the end of the file and we couldn't read anything. So we have to reset the file back to the beginning. Well, I've shown you how to do that in a previous video, so I'm just going to uh, copy the code and paste it in here. So here we go. Um, we have the text file, which is our input file. We just use our seek G operation with zero and iOS begin to reset this to the beginning of the file. And it's also a good idea to use the clear method, and this will clear out any error flags that might have come up when you are reading the file up here. It's unlikely, but it doesn't hurt. It makes sure that the system is clean when you start going through the file a second time. Now that we've done that, I want to separate the output that we've done from the first part from the part that we're going to do next. So I'm just going to do a little extra output here. So let's paste in a couple of lines of code. I'm going to write to the screen that we're now moving on to part two, and we've got a couple of end lines on both sides of that and as well as the output file. The uh, first loop up here, we wrote a bunch of stuff to our output file, and in the second loop, we're also gonna write some more stuff. So I'm just going to write part two to the output file so that we can tell the differences between the first part of the program we did and the second part. That also goes to the screen here. Now, to prepare for this, whenever I'm reading a file with a loop, I like to read the first line in before I start the loop. So let's do our get line here. So we can put the get line up here. This will read in the first line from the file and it stores it in the string variable line. As you know, that's how get line works. And then we want to get into the loop and start processing that line. We're not going to do much with the line. We're just going to write it back out to the file, but we'll also write it out to the screen just for convenience. So we need to put a while loop here. So let's drop the while loop in. So we have the same as before. We still have the text file as the pointer to our file that we're reading from. 
we're going to read till we get to the end of the file. Now, I've read the first line already. So once I get inside the loop, I'm just going to count it. So now we'll add one to the count. And while we're here, let's do a little bit of uh, analysis of the lines that we read in. So let's find out how many characters is in that line. All righty. Well, I'll print out C out to the screen. Line, line count number one in this case has, and I'll use the uh, length um, method in order to find out how long it is. So this will just print out line whatever has this many and then print out characters. So it'll tell us how long the line is. Then afterwards, we'll actually print the line that we read in. Okay, so the get line, get reads the line here, we print it out here. Then we're ready to move on and get the next line and do the same kind of analysis. So let's put the rest of the code in that we need for that. Okay, so let's put the code in here. We're doing two things. We are, once we've written the line out to the screen, then we can go ahead and write it out to the output file. So we're making a copy one line at a time. One really important thing to notice is when you're writing to the output file, you need to supply the end line. Otherwise, the end line character is not going to be written. Whenever you use get line, it reads the line, but it doesn't read the end of line character. So when you are writing out that line, then you'll need to provide your own end line if you want to have one there. Then let's move on to the next line and we'll read it in at the bottom of the loop with another get line. Then we'll go back to the top of the loop and then we'll just continue to do the same analysis. And when we're done, then we'll have the input or the output to the screen for you know, how long each line was. We'll print out the line. And then when we're all done and exit the loop, then we'll print out how many lines we copied to the file. Once we're done with that, we're done with the files. So we should go ahead and close them, and then we'll terminate the program here. Now, when we run this program, we're going to have essentially two copies of the file. The first one we did word by word with this first loop, and I didn't um, um, erase the data that we wrote or anything like that. So as we continue to write to the file down here, then we'll have another copy of the data. So the file that we're making in this example is going to have two copies of the original file. One that's done word by word and one that's done line by line. So let's uh, compile the program, run it, and look at the output. Now the program's running. And here's the output. So the words printed out one at a time show up at the top as we did that in part one. And we saw that it counted 727 words. So that's from the first part of this example. But here we are in part two. So part two looks a lot different. We are reading in one line at a time and we're printing out one line at a time. So it turns out that this line is a very big line. Okay, it says line number one has 597 characters. So if you look at the original data file, which you can see here, then whoever was typing this in, they didn't put an end of line character until they reached the end of this paragraph. So they just typed it in and then finally hit enter when they got to the end. So this entire paragraph is in one line. Then afterwards, this blank is just another enter. It's just a backslash in or just a blank line here. So this is a line as well, but it doesn't have any characters in it. Now let's look at the output again. So line number one is that first paragraph. And we count the characters. And here's all the data that we print out. Now let's look at the next one. Line number two has zero characters. So when we read the second time, when we did a second get line, then it picked up this blank line here, which didn't have anything but a, an enter. You hit the enter key, so a backslash in. Then we do another line, and it's going to read in the second entire paragraph and print it out. And that's what you see here. Okay, so line three, it had 482 characters. There we go. And it prints to the screen. Then line number four is the blank line, so it has nothing. Line five is the next paragraph, so you get the whole thing, and you get the idea. Line six is blank, and then so on for the rest of the file. So when you're reading line by line, you can get a great deal of data. Now let's look at the output file. 
uh, file browser. Let's open up copy text file with uh, WordPad again. So now you'll see the output file, and we have uh, the two versions. So um, this is the original file, so that's what that looked like with the paragraph form. Now let's move that out, and here is our copy. So the first part of this we did word by word, so that's all shown here. Then here's part two done by the second part of our program where we use getLine. So when we use the getLine, we read in the entire line, which is composed of this paragraph. Then when we wrote that out, we added the end of line character. So that's why we do see the, uh, the blank space here. So there's an end of line character there. And then we read in the next line, which is a blank line. And we print that out with an end line. So that causes this blank line to show up. And we move down here. So if you use the get line technique, then you can get an almost identical copy of the file because it preserves these blank lines in between. However, let's suppose you wanted to process the data that's in the file in some way. If you wanted to analyze the words, for example, and count the number of the things that are not words, like we have the numbers that are shown in here, then it would be hard to do that if you read in the entire paragraph you'd have to break it apart somehow and look at each one of these strings using the substring function or find or something like that. However, if you do read it in one word at a time, it's very easy to analyze each word as you go through. The copy doesn't look quite the same, but it depends on what your purpose is. You know, what is your goal? If you wanted to make a uh, exact copy, now get lines the way to go. If you did want to process the file by analyzing the words, then you might want to do it a, a one word at a time. So this little example then shows you how you can go about working with multiple files and the difference between reading um, a file one word at a time versus reading it one line at a time. So we'll stop the video at this point.